The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this eternal life that we that they now know, excuse me, and this eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking this on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our one, holy, and triune God. Amen. Before I was ordained, a few years ago, I preached occasionally at my home parish, which is St. John the Baptist in Minneapolis. I was scheduled to preach on a Sunday in August there some time ago, and the gospel was part of the long Bread of Life passage from John. There are four Sundays in year B when we get Bread of Life every single Sunday. The one I had was the one that said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in you. I read it and called the rector to say I needed to swap with somebody. <laughs> um, because I didn't know enough about John to preach on this. So first she said, yes, we'll do that, and she, she let me go. And then an hour and a half later, she called me back and said, Nobody knows enough about John to preach on John. <laughs> so here I am, still preaching on John. But there are times when I read John and my head spins. He says things like, I am in you, and you are in me, and we are in them, and they are in us, and it just goes round and round and round. And my eyes cross, and I wonder, what in the world is this saying? So, at a meeting this week, I was interested in the reflections on this reading by the other two folks in the, the service, in the meeting. And they shall remain nameless, but one is a musician, and he remarked that he was reminded of the Beatles song, I Am the Walrus, with the words, I am he as you are he as you are me, and we are all together. The other person was an engineer, and she immediately began drawing a process diagram of Jesus and the Father and the disciples as glory passed from one to the other. It was very good to know that I'm not the only one who has trouble with John and whose first reaction to the reading is not especially pious. But I did sit with the reading over the week, and the phrase, so that they may be one as we are one, stood out to me. Our bishop wrote a letter this week 
on that part of the passage talking about diversity in the Diocese of Minnesota and how we can be one in all our diversity. And that's important because sometimes union and unity are confused with uniformity and sameness. We are made for union with God and to be in union with one another, but we're not called to be the same. You can just look around here at the people who are gathered this morning and see that there are many differences among us. Eye color, age, height, body type, skin color, speech patterns, education, political views, socioeconomic status. You could go on and on about all the differences that we experience just in this community. And yet we're called to be one, as one with God and with each other. So what does that union mean and how can we nurture it? Paul talks about union with God as coming to maturity in Christ, coming in, growing up into the fullness of Christ. And union among ourselves is really to live out the promises we make in baptism, seeking and serving Christ in all people, loving our neighbor as ourselves, striving for justice and peace among everyone, and respecting the dignity of every human being. One way to nurture that union among ourselves is the very Anglican and Episcopal practice of sharing the Lord's table even with those with whom we disagree mightily. We are one spiritually and liturgically with each other, even when we might disagree about theology or liturgics or politics or anything else. When we give the peace and come up to communion together, we affirm that we are all children of God and beloved by God. Having a common table, whether it's the table of the altar here, the table of the Good Shepherd, as we talked about with the children, or the dining table in our own homes, having a common table is an essential way we demonstrate union with other people. The same practice nurtures our union with God. We become more like Jesus as we faithfully celebrate the Eucharist. When we receive the consecrated bread and wine, we take the body of Christ into ourselves, and in some way, we are transformed little by little into that body. We become what we have received. In a few minutes here, some of the younger members of the church will be coming to the altar for communion for the very first time. And we have been preparing for this by hearing and reflecting on the story of the feeding of the 5,000, the Good Shepherd and the table of the Good Shepherd, and knowing that the Good Shepherd is somehow in the bread and the wine on the table. Let's pray for these new communicants among us as they're growing into the full stature of Christ. Their example is an invitation to each of us to renew our own desire for union with the one who created everything and to allow the Spirit of God to bring us closer into union with one another and with God as we receive and become more fully the body of Christ. Amen. <laughs>